In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we gather to be fed and nourished by the Lord, we will hear the wonderful parable he gives us of the, the seed and the sower. And how important it is to hear Jesus even explain about the distractions and the distractors that can be in our life. But how simple it can be to just let him feed us, let him nur nurture us, and send us forth to bear fruit as well. For the times we have not been as successful as we could be, for the times we've sinned, for the times we've doubted. We call on God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, 
so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are counted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed to us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, 
in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path. The birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched. It withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he said to them, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. And from anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because... They look, but do not see, and hear, but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. And they have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted. And I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. 
Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what has been, been sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky grounds is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word of God, but then word, worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bear fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. The Gospel of the Lord. I can't help but think about how so many of us recognize that the stresses have been very powerful in our lives as people, as communities, as families, and as individuals, as church. And it seems to me, as I said in my opening comments, that Jesus' parable today for us can be rich in the way that it tells us, first of all, that our ears and our eyes, our experience of him is indeed rich because of his nearness to us and how he explains not just his parables but how he gives himself to us all the time as his disciples. And it was there that I think my, my little reflection for you will, um, I hope, bear fruit, pardon the pun, or the connection. You know, you and I are privileged to be here tonight and we not only receive the word that is spoken, but we receive the word of God that is Jesus in the Eucharist. And it will be the culmination of what we're here for tonight as we receive him. And it strikes me that these days as we've had to, um, first of all, thirst and hunger for the Eucharist, but then even as we come, do all the different things that we have to to try to keep each other safe. At the same time, it, it made me think about the stresses that are there and how we respond to them. You know, if we really believe what Jesus is in the Eucharist or in his Holy Word, as being present to us always, the way we've been hearing this week. In fact, he tells us, he told us this week that we, he would never abandon us, he would never not be there for us. If we really believe that Jesus' presence is so real in the Eucharist, then when we can exercise this privilege and we have that opportunity to receive the Lord, we receive all of them, whether we receive in a little piece or a big piece or we receive just in the blessed host or if we had that opportunity to receive only in the precious blood. It doesn't matter. We receive all of Jesus and his presence is real and it's such a central part of why we come and what we believe that we receive Jesus as his gift to us. It's so important that we always start there. But if we were to hear Jesus' parable today, it also matters about our lives that receive him, the soil that receives him. And as we come, if we're not careful and we don't heed his teaching and we don't um, be those blessed people who have heard his word and cherish it and live it, 
then it's so easy for us to get caught up in the tribulations and trials, the pitfalls, the stones, the weeds that can surround us, especially in times of tribulation. And that's the unfortunate thing when we let those things affect how we receive the Lord. You know, Jesus is there for us. He's going to be there for every one of us. But the rich soil is the soil of those that receive him in charity and with charity, with the faith of heart that he will bear fruit in us. And that's the part that is so very important for us and why all so many spiritual writers wrote about how important it is for us to root out sin and doubt and deceit. And if you don't believe the writers, then we believe Jesus himself who says nothing that comes into us can make us impure, but what's inside of us already, those things like jealousy and deceit and lusts and envy, those are the things that make us impure. It doesn't affect the reality of how Jesus gives himself to us. It affects how much fruit we can bear. Jesus gives himself to every single one of us. But rooting out those things that don't allow us to bear fruit for him, that don't allow us to be that soil that he would indeed choose to bear fruit in, that's the part that has to be a constant part of our lives and especially in, in times of trial and tribulation, especially when those weeds are around us and there can be so much that is negative. But we're to be those blessed people, those people that let Jesus himself till that soil, let his mercy forgive us and cause us to want to forgive others to even love our enemies. This parable of the sower and the seed is, is such an important part of how we prepare to receive the Lord every, every week, every day. And to be able to know that we are always working on making our lives the best vessel to receive the Lord in his perfectness. That's the part that's hard to do. And that's the part also that allows Jesus to change us inside and out. You know, as true as it is that Jesus identified those things that are within us that are not of his kingdom, he didn't just identify them. He also told us that he can forgive them. He also told us that he can make us perfect, that he can teach us and have us help each other along that path. So today I ask you to pray with me that, that there's plenty of rich soil for the Lord to be planted in this, this week among us, in our world, in our families, in our communities, and that our hearts are part of those. So that that true presence of Jesus can shine in each of us. And to start right where Jesus invites us, to start with charity, charity to receive him and charity to give him to the world. And we will bear fruit a hundred and sixty and thirtyfold. Honestly, no limit to it. Because that's what the Lord intends. But make no mistake about it. He also tells his disciples, blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears 
because they hear. And then he sends us forth. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our prayers before the altar of our Lord. For the church, that we may spread the hopeful and exciting message of the gospel through both our words and deeds, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For a new springtime of justice, that God's reign of justice and peace may develop abundantly in our hearts and in all structures of our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For conversion of hearts, that God will free us from prejudice and unfair judgments so that each person may be treated with dignity and respect. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater love for the word of God, that we may make space in our busy lives to allow the word of God to challenge and prune us so that we may bear abundant fruit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests, teachers, and parents, that they may announce God's loving compassion faithfully and convincingly so that others may come to know the living God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we would understand this virus more, that the Lord would guide the research that can help us to be safe and to be able to build society and church again more freely. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For all those who continue to work to keep us safe in spite of the dangers. For workers everywhere that are working extra hard and extra hours. For a peace to reign in our hearts and in our souls. As we work together to beat this virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all for whom we have promised to pray. For those who have no one to pray for them or no one to listen. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For hope. For faith. For love in the world. That God's cardinal virtues will reign in our hearts and lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
almighty and ever-living God, just as you send the rain to nourish the earth, so we are parched for your presence. Take root in our lives, in word and in sacrament, and indeed help us to bear your fruit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with these gifts we offer you in sacrifice of humble and contrite heart. sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may be brought to even greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. 
and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and all our patron saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Walter Hurley, our apostolic administrator, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine mercy, we have the privilege to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. spiritually. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament, O Lord. I love you above all things and desire to receive you in my soul. I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you are already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never let us be separated from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of Christ, keep us safe for eternal life. Communion antiphon. The sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her young. 
by your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house and forever sing your praise. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord. Let us pray. Consuming these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this holy mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We go forth bearing Christ with our lives. We'll give communion now for those who want to. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. The body of Christ. <laughs> 